While you were just talking, um, our colleague Kara Scannell reporting that an appeals court has ruled on this bond issue. We know the former president was he, he had to post uh, over $460 million today. Um, and we've learned that a New York Court of Appeals has given Trump 10 additional days to post a bond of $175 million. Now, that would cover the $464 million judgment against him in the civil fraud trial. So this is significant because this reduces the amount that he needs to post and also gives him 10 additional days. Now, there was a concern today that if he wasn't able to do this, that the attorney general, Letitia James, she could move to start seizing his assets. But now uh, we're learning that the appeals court has weighed in here. They have ruled that he only needs to post $175 million. Still a lot of money, but uh, less than half of what he had to post before, and he now has 10 days to do that. So, so that is, is a huge, significant, huge, this significant is huge win for news him. Because the, and also, we typically don't hear from the appeals court on Mondays. Even Trump's team was under the belief that they would only make a, an argument on or a ruling on Tuesdays or Thursdays. So while they've been inside this room, the appeals court has just said not only does he not have to pay the full amount, yeah. he only has to pay $175 million. They've been trying, I believe, for $100 million, but he also has 10 more days to come up with that $175 million in this case. I'm going to read this. So, yeah, this is a huge, a huge win for him. Um, I'm going to let Kristen take it for what she's yeah, hearing from the Trump look, team, and I'll read this. Uh, an enormous win because the fact that he would not have to pay the huge sum of nearly $500 million, pay. which he couldn't pay, which we were waiting essentially to see what's going to happen. We had absolutely no word from Trump's attorneys whether or not he could post the bond. We were essentially under the impression he had not come up with a, as you said, rabbit in the hat for the 11th hour, that it, it was going to shift now to this idea of whether or not Letitia James was going to start seizing these assets. The other thing to point out here, when they approached those 30 or so underwriters, one of the big complaints that they were essentially having was that underwriters don't usually go for this amount of nearly half a billion dollars. They were saying that the underwriters were saying, okay, we'll do a hundred million. That's kind of our cap. Now there's a little bit of wiggle room, right? It's $175 million, still an enormous amount of money, a lot closer to what they were willing to do in the first place than that $464, $500 million mark. So now they have, they can go back to some of these places and see, would you be willing to do this? Also, he has the 10 days to figure out, does he have any of the assets he can add to this? Well, and this is a huge you know, surprise, even for Trump's legal team, who walked into this courthouse this morning for the criminal case and to figure out what's going on there, which I should know, it's going about as bad as it, as badly <laughs> yeah. as it could inside that courtroom right now. But this is huge news for them to come out and hear that not only do they have more time here, but it's way less than what they thought that they would have to pay and maybe more palatable to these insurance giants to help underwrite that. Yeah, this is really significant because as we talked about today, you know, even by Trump standards, this is such a consequential mm -hmm. day. He's in here potentially learning uh, about when the first criminal trial he will face will begin. And then he was facing the possibility that he would not be able to post this bond. And then the attorney general would be seizing his assets, his identity for so long has been as a successful billionaire businessman, his name adorns buildings in this city uh, and around the world. And we had talked about earlier the fact that he had appealed. We didn't expect to get a decision today. But here, I mean, this is a huge relief for him, and it does make it possible, though not certain, that he might be able to post this bond, seeing that they've made it less than half and given him 10 days to figure out how to potentially come up with this money. So this is this is a huge relief for Trump. And let's see, we'll start working the phones and see if they can come up with this money. Well, and I think what is notable here is that as everyone at home is learning about this, as we are learning about this, Trump and his legal team are just learning about this because they've been inside that courtroom for two hours arguing something entirely different and unaware that this was a ruling that was coming today. They were expecting if it was coming, it would come tomorrow or maybe Thursday. And I think that they weren't necessarily holding their breath that this was going to change at all. I mean, we talk about this a lot, what they, they asked weren't counting for. On the yes, they weren't court. counting on the appeals court, that they thought that maybe they were going to have to end up trying to figure out what happens next in terms of seizing assets, in terms of Letitia James moving forward. You know, we talk a lot about what Trump's legal team does in court and what their expectation is. A lot of it is done to kind of try to delay or to come up with new solutions. It's exhausting every avenue. Again, that's what your lawyers are paid to do. That's what they should be doing. This case, you know, I think it was really 50-50 in their minds yeah. as to whether or not the appeals court would come back and have any changes at all, particularly having both of these is a good thing for Donald Trump.
Yeah, and, and Jim, this is notable because this is these two moments that we've been talking about all, all morning, these twin moments. What is happening right now inside the court has not been going well for Donald Trump and his legal team. The judge has been kind of reprimanding his attorney, but they just walked out for that 45 minute recess to some very welcome news from this appeals court when it comes to that bond now being lowered and having more time to front that bond. Yeah, Caitlin, I mean, uh, Trump has re been referring to some of these properties as his, quote, babies. Uh, so perhaps uh, the, the babies are safe for now. Uh, let me go back to our panel here in Washington, Phil Mattingly. I mean, Trump catches a break on, no, on the bond issue. There's no question about yeah. it. I th and I think it's important to the extent, without getting too deep into the financial weeds, to explain why this is so important and why the initial bond that had been set was so extraordinarily difficult for him to be able to meet. It wasn't just that it was $465 million, which was the judgment. It was that... The way insurers work to underwrite that, they almost without fail require 120% of the bond itself. So that pushed it over $550 million. The point was also made, I think it was by Caitlin or by Kristen, that these uh, insurers themselves usually aren't trying to go over $100 million. It is not normal. This is the size of this. There's not a lot of precedent when it comes particularly to an individual and a very small company. This isn't some massive public company that has huge revenues, has huge uh, access to credit lines at major banks. Most of Donald Trump's banking relationships had all but disintegrated over the course of the last several years. And so not only is, while Donald Trump is liquid, he's not that liquid, they're requiring cash and cash equivalents. They are saying no to any property. Most of Donald Trump's value is in property. What yeah. this allows by reducing this by about $300 million, giving him 10 days to find it, is one, he has cash. He's made clear he has cash and cash equivalents. And actually for Donald Trump, the records actually back that up. So he does have some cash. The other thing that's really interesting here, and Ellie was talking about this last week, there's the truth social element of this. There's the merger that closed last week or is in the process of closing, could start trading as a public company by Tuesday or Wednesday of this week. While those shares, which are worth billions of dollars for Donald Trump, yeah. would technically be under a lockup agreement for six months, he wouldn't be able to use them, he wouldn't be able to sell them, um, he may be able to get a waiver to uh, take out a loan against them. Right now, that would be impossible without a waiver. If the yeah. board gives them a waiver, that's another avenue, significantly less money, more time, uh, and opens up some options that perhaps didn't exist. Uh, Ellie, tell us, I mean, did he catch a break? I mean, he oh, has my. 10 days to fork over $175 billion. I mean, that's still a lot of money. But, yes, but oh my goodness, did he catch a but, break. But the, the buildings may be safe. I mean, the, the, For those, now, yeah. for sure. I mean, yeah. so a couple, th two big things happened. First, he got the extra time, 10 days. Time is very valuable here. But the amount of the bond he has to post has been cut by more than in half. And here comes the appeals court at the 11th hour and 59th minute and 59th second to give him this huge reduction. I just read through the order issued by the Court of Appeals. It's two pages long. There's Next to nothing in terms of here's why we've come in with this huge reduction. But the fact that they've issued a substantial reduction, it happens. There are other cases we've seen where courts of appeals have come in and reduced bonds amounts by more than this, by 80, 90%. Yeah. There is some, I think, implicit judgment in here that the amount of the bond, the full 500 plus million dollars, was unnecessary or excessive. It's not necessarily that they're passing judgment on the case as a whole, but what the court of appeals is saying is we, the court system, will be fine with a bond of $175 million. Yeah. And remember the purpose of the bond. This is not the full decision as to whether an appeal or the lower court ruling was wrong. In order to actually go through the appellate process for Trump, he had to have posted this bond. Now, many would look at this issue and say, well, hold on a second. That doesn't seem fair inherently that you have to resolve this money prior to the full appeal process happening. So that take it with legislature, if that's your issue, by the way, and the court rules. But this, the court is likely saying right now, we are confident that with this amount of money, that there is enough there to support that he can go forward with the procedural aspects of the appeal. I wouldn't read the tea leaves to suggest that they think that Engoran was wrong in his ultimate ruling or yeah. that the proportionality is so skewed. But certainly, this is one heck of a break for yet again Teflon Don.